welcome to this Saturday Travel and History Tip. We are continuing on the Bosque Redondo Memorial at Fort Sumner State Monument in Fort Sumner, New Mexico. The Bosque Redondo Memorial at Fort Sumner State Monument solemnly remembers the dark days of suffering from 1863 to 1868 when the U.S. military persecuted and imprisoned 9,500 Navajo and 500 Mescalero Apache on a reservation known as Bosque Redondo at Fort Sumner, New Mexico, an area that encompasses 1,600 square miles. That's over 1 million acres. The Bosque Redondo Memorial Mission is to respectfully interpret the history of two cultures, the Diné and the Inde, during the United States government's military campaign of ethnic persecution in the 1860s. Tour and learn about the Bosque Redondo Memorial that remembers their past and celebrates their future. The early 1860s witnessed increased American expansion into New Mexico. The Navajos and Apaches resisted the invasion of their homelands by the settlers and raided throughout the territory. Say to them, go to Bosque Redondo or we will pursue and destroy you. We will not make peace with you on any terms. You have deceived us too often and robbed and murdered our people too long. To trust you again at large in your own country, this war will be pursued against you if it takes years until you cease to exist or move. Carlton, in a letter to Carson, September 19, 1863. During the winter of 1863-1864, Colonel Kit Carson's New Mexico volunteers, aided by Indian scouts and informants, ravaged the Navajo countryside, killing Navajo, burning crops and orchards, killing livestock, destroying villages, and contaminating water sources. This scorched earth campaign of Carson's designed to starve the Navajo into submission would be aptly called by the Navajos the Fearing Time. The U.S. Army rounded up thousands of Navajos and forced them to march over 400 miles in winter to the Bosque Redondo Reservation, which was established here for their exile. Approximately 11,000 Navajos survived the long walk, and about 450 Mescalero Apache were also interned at the site. Fort Sumner was established specifically to keep the Navajos and Apaches at the concentration camp. The reservation experiment was a nightmarish catastrophe. There was never enough food. Agricultural efforts met with failure. Wood for cooking and warmth was scarce, and even the water seemed unhealthy. The prisoners were allowed to return to their homelands in 1868, and the fort was abandoned in the same year. 3,000 people died here in exile. And I'm not going to read everything that I have gathered on this. It is an incredible history, and I would encourage you to do that. Here is Treaty Rock. It is where the treaty was signed. The Treaty of 1868 was signed in a field between the fort and the memorial. By definition, a treaty can only be signed by two nations. Thus, the Treaty of 1868 established under federal law the sovereignty of the Navajo Nation. The Navajo were allowed to return to their original homelands in the Four Corners region. 100 years later, in February of 1971, Navajos from different parts of the nation gathered and brought rocks from their homes to commemorate their ancestors who suffered and died at Bosque Redondo. In commemoration of the Navajos who lived here in exile 1863 to 1868, the centennial reenactment of the signing of the Treaty of Peace, 1 June 1868 took place on this spot, erected by the Navajo Tribe and the Plateau Sciences Society, Window Rock, Arizona, February 1971. Cage the badger and he will try to break from his prison and regain his native hole. Chain the eagle to the ground. He will strive to gain his freedom and Though he fails, he will lift his head and look up at the sky, which is home. And we want to return to our mountains and plains, where we used to plant corn, wheat, and beans. A Navajo Indian, 1865. At dawn on June 18, 1868, the people began their long trip home. Here are a few pictures from our visit to the military reservation of Fort Sumner. The buildings in this photo were the first Fort Sumner situated immediately southwest of the later permanent fort establishment. The site of these initial structures was directly in front of you and has been completely washed away by the Pecos River. And here are the barracks, which have been converted into a small museum. But because of what I always say, because of COVID, the doors were closed and we could not enter. But we were able to walk around the walls that remained of the fort. If you were standing right on this spot sometime in 1864, you would have witnessed this scene. After the long walk, the Navajos had to build quarters 
for their captors. This group of men is building infantry barracks under guard. The finished buildings at the right is quarters for California cavalry. There is a small irrigation ditch in the foreground. You are now standing on the Fort Sumner parade ground. The company quarters had adobe walls that were 30 inches thick. The exterior walls were left unfinished, but the interiors were coated with whitewash. Fireplaces were used for both heating and cooking, and the long portal or porch was a common feature of building construction at that time. These men are fit soldiers. They are standing in front of their barracks, which stood at the north end of the parade ground. All Indian men of the Mescalero tribe are to be killed whenever and wherever you find them. The women Men and children will not be harmed, but you will take them prisoners and feed them at Fort Stanton until you receive other instructions about them. General Carlton to Colonel Carson. The Mescalero Apache were the first Native Americans to be incarcerated at Bosque Redondo. The name Mescalero means mezcal makers. The mezcal is a large desert agave plant, which was a main food staple. Apache women would dig the root out of the ground and roast it. It was easily carried and played a large role in their survival when other food sources were scarce. There was neither hunting or mezcal available to them at Bosque Redondo. General Carlton was unable to keep his promise to protect, feed, and house them at Bosque Redondo. So in 1865, the proud and strong mescalero Apache people escaped in the night, deserted their imprisonment at Bosque Redondo, and returned to their homeland in the Sacramento Mountains. The military never caught them again. The farmlands were to the north of the fort where crops were grown. Corn was the Indians' principal crop, but they also grew wheat, beans, melons, pumpkins, and sorghum. Despite the Indians' best efforts, the agricultural experiment was a disaster. Cutworms ravaged the cornfields from 1864 to 1866. The crops of 67 were a total failure due to early drought and late hailstorms. The Indians refused to plant the following year. These losses obliged the U.S. government to supply the 7,000 prisoners with foodstuffs. Rations were always minimal, but food expenses still ranged up to $1.5 million annually. And here is the Pecos River that is alongside the back of the park. And here's a quote from General James Carlton, 1862. A military post will at once be established at Bosque Redondo on the Pecos River and will be garrisoned by two companies of cavalry and one of infantry. And we hiked along this portion of the Pecos River. Over 2,000 Navajos perished on what is known as the Long Walk, and during their time of incarceration suffering at Bosque Redondo until their release in 1868, known as Wilde. The Diné are a pastoral society. Their environment is defined by mountains, canyons, sheer sandstone cliffs, and riverbeds. Centuries of living in a rugged, unpredictable environment endowed Navajos with a tenacious instinct for survival. As pastoralists, the need to expand to new horizons increased as sheep herds grew and forage areas decreased. This put them in direct conflict with a more aggressive herding society the white and Spanish settlers of New Mexico. The Navajos possessed the finest grazing land and mineral-rich areas which the settlers coveted. Navajo social structures is built around tight family units with a strong family head. They had no concept of living in large communal groups with strangers in a Pueblo society as they were forced to do at Bosque Redondo. And adjacent to the state memorial is this Bosque Redondo Memorial Fort Sumner Historic Site. And at this time, there was free admission, a new community. Following the design disastrous failure of the U.S. government's Bosque Redondo experiment. The land set aside as reservation returned to the public domain. The Army sold the fort buildings and other improvements to the famous frontiersman Lucien B. Maxwell in 1870, and he moved his family into former military post in 1871. Within a year, Fort Sumner had transformed into a small farm and ranch community consisting of about 200 people. At dawn on June 15, 1868, the Navajos began their long journey home. The procession, 10 miles long, covered 10 to 12 miles a day for 35 days. It included 7,304 Indians, 1,500 horses and mules, and 2,000 sheep, along with 50 army wagons and a cavalry escort. An impressive and touching sight, even to a hardened soldier. A never-to-be-forgotten spectacle to all those who witnessed the long walk home. Chief Barboncito told his people, After we get back to our country, it will brighten up again, and the Navajo will be as happy as the land. Black clouds will rise, and there will be plenty of rain. Corn will grow in abundance, and everything look happy. On July 4th, they reached Tejeras Canyon, 12 miles east of Albuquerque, and the Navajos knew Mount Taylor. Your present-day Grants, New Mexico, lay only 100 miles beyond. On the side of Mount Taylor, Chief Manuelto was quoted, The days and nights were long before it came time for us to go to our homes. When we saw the top of the mountain from Albuquerque, we wondered if it was our mountain, and we felt like talking to the ground. We loved it so, and some of the old men and women cried with joy when they reached their homes. The new Fort Wingate, now near present-day Gallup, was the last stop for the Navajos on the long road 
deployed back to their old country. General Sherman ordered the old fort replaced and envisioned it for the headquarters of the Navajo Agency. The Bosque Gradando experience resulted in a more determined and resilient Navajo, and never again would they be the surprise raiders of the Rio Grande Valley. In subsequent years, they would expand their new reservation into an area of 17 million acres, and this will end this portion of our Bosque Redondo Saturday Travel and History Tip. Next week, we will get to Billy the Kid. American history. Learn it. Love it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.